Okay, great. Uh, well, Mike Stockholm from Fox IT from the Netherlands, and uh, I'm pre presenting ransomware detection with Bro. Uh, I give a short introduction about who I am. Um, as I said, I'm Mike. I'm a security analyst at Fox IT at the Security Operations Center. Uh, I started my internship at Fox IT in February and graduated in July, t uh, this July. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a little bit about Fox IT about ransomware itself, the policy I wrote to detect ransomware. Uh, I give some results of what I found while testing on different PCAPs, but also on live traffic. And I give you a short demo. Uh, Fox IT itself is located in Delft, the Netherlands. Uh, the company is, is an IT security focused company. We do managed security services, auditing, and uh, create cryptographic solutions for big companies that uh, are military-graded uh, encryption. Um, at the Security Operations Center, we're using SNORT-based detection rules. Um, with ransomware, it's really hard to um, keep up with everything that, because it's growing a lot. Um, so most of the times, there are a lot of false positives. And uh, I'm the only one actually using Bro in the Security Operations Center to check for certain problems or gather more information about some unknown uh, traffic we're seeing. Uh, I'm going to talk about the ransomware, uh, ransomware itself. Uh, a little bit of explanation. Uh, ransomware is malware that encrypts uh, the documents on a victim's computer. After, this, after, after everything has been encrypted, it gives you a ransom message with say, saying, oh, your files have been encrypted. You get to, get, to get your files back, you need to pay a, a certain amount of money. Once the amount of money has been paid in bitcoins most of the times, uh, the user will get a decryption tool to decrypt their files, and everything will be fine. Um, ransomware is an, actually a rising concern uh, because it's actually grown a lot uh, since 2016 is only getting, getting more and more versions of different kinds of ransomware. Um, even though some versions of ransomware are, getting, um, are not working anymore because they got already decrypted or the master, master key has been, um, received, have been uh, cracked, it still keeps on growing. Not only because it's spreading a lot, but also because it's uh, served as a ransomware as a service. People can actually buy the uh, ransomware as a service to spread their own ransomware and uh, collect money from it. Uh, the encryption process of ransomware uh, starts uh, with the author generating a master key. Uh, he puts the, pu the, private, the public key into the malware and starts spreading. Once the, mal the, pay the ransomware has been started on the victim's computer, it starts generating a key. With this key, it starts encrypting the files. Once the, the ransomware is done with uh, encrypting the files, it's uh, using the public key to decrypt, uh, to encrypt the key used to encrypt the files. The encrypted key used for uh, encrypting the files will be sent back to the uh, command and control server of the author. And once the payment has done, the public key, uh, private key you, uh, generated at the, with the master key is being used to decrypt the uh, encrypted key that was being used to encrypt the file, uh, the files of the user. It's like a whole circle of everything coming back around. Uh, the impact of ransomware. Um, if a single comp uh, personal computer is being affected, it's not a big of impact. Uh, of course, the user's file has been encrypted, and the only way to get it back is to pay the ransom. Uh, but actually, for a lot of companies, it's a big impact. It can cause to, um, to kill the main uh, work process, like uh, if a network share gets encrypted, uh, all the important files uh, has been encrypted, nobody can work anymore with those files. So actually, the whole day, they cannot um, use those files anymore. Uh, the IT department of the company uh, will be bringing back the backups that would take maybe a day or two if everything is going fine. And um, once uh, that also means that the company needs to pay the IT department to uh, set the backups back, and the company can go on. Um, because they the IT department needs to restore the backups, um, uh, they 
are getting paid for extra work. Um, so there's actually question, uh, there's some discussion going on. Should we pay the ransom or should we actually use the IT department to restore all the backups? Um, I would say for a company, just pay the ransom. It's faster. It's way faster than using the IT department to restore uh, the backup files. But the only problem is you're helping the authors to, uh, to continue their, spread, uh, their campaign of spreading ransomware. So you're actually kind of funding them to keep on going. Uh, ransomware is currently spread with two, uh, on two methods, exploit kits and uh, email. Um, Explo exploit kits makes use of vulnerabilities in the victim's browser. And email is actually sending a malicious document and uh, they need to enable some macros to download the executable uh, to get the ransomware running. Um, exploit kit works as following. It checks for a certain uh, flash value, uh, flash version. Once the version um, is vulnerable, it does an IP check. Um, and here we can see actually uh, ransomware authors are kind of racist because they exclude European, uh, Eastern European countries. The reason for that is there's no money in these countries. Um, they're too poor to pay the ransom, so they're just focusing on all the other countries. Um, once the IP check is uh, finished, and it's not an Eastern European IP address, it downloads the, pay, uh, the ransomware payload and starts running it. Uh, with a malicious document, it starts, uh, it gives you a form of an uh, ID like there's an, the, the file has, uh, has some issues and to see the issues or fix the problem, you need to enable macros. Once you enable the macro, official basic scripts on the background starts downloading, downloading the, ex the payload and it will execute it to install the ransomware. Uh, an Another method being used is remote desktop programs. It's not really uh, used that much, but uh, seeing from um, after the TeamViewer hack in 2016, uh, we actually saw a lot of uh, ransomware being spread by TeamViewer or uh, RDP sessions, just by get, uh, getting access to the computer with the remote, uh, remote desktop programs. They just place the uh, ransomware payload on it and starts encrypting the files. Uh, the detection methods currently of uh, ransomware is really hard because it keeps on growing and growing and growing. Uh, a lot of the things we're using is snort rules. Uh, those check on uh, certain CNC traffic or uh, file extensions. But because the ransomware keeps on growing, they start changing their, um, their file extensions or uh, the way they communicate with their, with their com uh, command and control server. And that's actually a big problem because we keep, need to keep on testing new kinds of ransomware and find out what, uh, what uh, file extension they're using or the way they uh, contact with their command and control server. Uh, because of this problem, I actually um, created a bro policy to detect the ransomware. Um, so my approach for uh, creating the policy was um, just how does ransomware work? Um, can I detect it in the communication with the CNC server? Can I see the actual uh, encryption process? So I started testing a lot of ransomware. It's like insane how many uh, samples I tested. And it's actually pretty hard to get yourself infected. I, one day I was just clicking a lot of samples and no ransomware. It was insane. I actually thought about uh, thought, how can clients of ours get infected? by ransomware when I'm not even getting any ransomware installed on my computer. Uh, not my computer, the testing environment. Um, so, I, um, so after my um, research, I found out that with the uh, SMB protocol, I was able to detect the, the encryption process. Um, uh, because, encryption, uh, because when ransomware is gonna encrypt a, encrypt a file, it starts sending a lot of SMB uh, protocol requests to the, serv the, to the network share. Uh, I'm not gonna tell too much about the SMB protocol because Seth is already doing that, otherwise he has nothing to tell in his next presentation. 
but uh, the main commands you being used by, re uh, by um, changing a, a file and changing the final content and its name are uh, write request and set info requests. Uh, once ransomware starts encrypting your files, it starts sending a lot of write requests to, a, to certain files. That's where almost actually all the files with certain extensions. And uh, not only just one write request, no, it's like almost 20 write requests to one single file. Um, after that, after the encryption, after the file has been encrypted, it's uh, it's starting a set info to change the file name. Uh, a certain extension is using like uh, um, myfile.doc.fun is an encryption uh, is a file extension that's being used by a ransomware. But it's also sometimes changing the full name to a certain hexadecimal um, file name or something else. Um, so after uh, analyzing everything I could about ransomware, I thought about possible solutions, like file extension listing, uh, threshold of the SMB commands being sent, or the, com and the control communication, but all of those have some problems. File extension listing, you need, to be, you need to be up to date with all the file extensions being used by ransomware. Uh, with the SMB threshold commands, you're getting a lot of false positives. It's like if we're having uh, 200 people working on a single network share and they all started clicking, uh, editing one file, you're already getting 200 uh, write requests. Not like it's actually ever going to happen, but some programs are generating a lot of write requests. And the command and control communication is really hard because there is no way to uh, keep up with the different kinds of methods of, being of the communication. So I actually started with, the, with entropy. Uh, for the, for you, those who don't know what entropy is, entropy is the randomness of data. Um, uh, Bro already has a function to calcu calculate the entropy. Um, and uh, once, a once entropy is between zero and eight bits per character, it can indicate if data is actually randomized or not. Uh, higher the value means it's actually randomized. Um, okay, so further. I'm going back, sorry. Um, because uh, the reason I'm using entropy is encryption randomizes data. It keeps on randomizing blocks of, uh, in blocks of data and sending a cer uh, writing a certain uh, amount of bytes per block. Uh, this way, once an encrypted file, and once a file has been encrypted, it has a larger amount of bits per character. This means that uh, an encrypted file has a high entropy uh, value. Uh, after testing all certain, uh, certain files of normal files and encrypted files, I actually had the um, I had the threshold of 7.5 entropy, uh, the value of 7.5. Uh, the reason for this is because um, actually eight is maximum number of randomized data. Only the problem is a lot of ransomware authors didn't implement encryption that good, so sometimes the entropy value is lower than expected. Um, but also there are files that have uh, from itself already in high uh, entropy value. Uh, and those files are compressed files, images, and PDFs. Uh, so these files generate a lot of false positives. Um, but luckily, compressed files, images, and PDF have media types. Uh, by, te by checking the media types of uh, these kind of files, we can already uh, exclude these files to being checked for, entropy, uh, for an entropy calculation. Uh, so for my bro policy, I'm, I use the SMP parser uh, included, uh, made by Seth, that's currently in bro 2.5. Uh, for the events, I'm using file over new connection and chunk event. I'm using some set to threshold to make sure uh, a notice is being written, and of course a notes log for uh, to get the, if there's an incident going on. Uh, for file over new connection. I'm checking for, an S for SMB traffic. There's no SMB traffic, I'm not interested in it. I'm purely focusing on SMB traffic. Um, I'm checking for certain file names. And the reason I'm doing this is because after uh, while I was testing, I actually found some interesting stuff that I need to exclude because they're 
actually generating a lot of false positives, but I'm going to tell more about that. Uh, I'm checking for the MIME type. Uh, exclude everything that doesn't have a MIME type. Uh, after that, I'm checking for an SMB action. Um, the SMB action is a write uh, action, or a, a, the, write, the SMB write command, because I'm only interested in write commands. Um, if the SMB action equals write command, I add a file, fi file analyzer. With the file analyzer, I'm able to capture the data being sent on, in the SMB write command. In the check event, I'm actually uh, in the chunk event. I check for an offset equals to zero. Uh, the reason for I'm using an offset equals to zero is to check if a file uh, if a file has no MIME type because in the first packet in the header of a file, uh, it's able to make clear if a file has an, uh, a MIME type or a media type. Um, once the offset equals zero, I uh, calculate the entropy uh, of the data collected with the file analyzer. Uh, if the uh, entropy uh, equals 7.5, I'm using some. Uh, I'll make sure that some stat adds a, a plus one to the uh, to the counter for the threshold. Uh, after that, it writes the file the file name, the entropy value, and um, let me think. There's another thing. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the media type to a log file, and after that, if the threshold has been reached, it writes everything to a notice log. To make sure the one, um, to make sure it's in, there's a notice in the log. Um, here are some re results while testing everything. While testing on a client server, I actually found two new kinds of ransomware, and I was actually pretty, uh, pretty pleased, but also not really, because the kinds of ransomware were actually, it's Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. Uh, they're encrypting your, uh, your data on your computer. Uh, the reason I detected this is because um, a client of ours has all their roaming profiles stored on the SMB uh, network share. Um, but the uh, function of um, Mozilla and Google Chrome is to uh, make everything browse fast and everything is to cache it. Uh, they make use of encrypted caching. So they're actually encrypting your data in their cache to make your uh, browsing go faster and everything else. So there was actually like something I needed to exclude because it was generating a lot of false positives. Why does it apply on Google? <laughs> because it's actually not ransomware that is ransoming, uh, is taking your files, uh, uh, is, is actually encrypting your files. So to get it back, it's already they have the private key uh, to decrypt everything. You already got the key, so yeah, you don't need to pay for it. But yeah, we're still encrypting your files just to make sure nobody else can take it, except for the except for your browser. And after testing some uh, further, I actually found uh, in our in Fox IT, I saw some strange traffic. And it had a different file extension that I've never seen. After testing, it actually was our audit department uh, writing files to, uh, with TrueCrypt and FerroCrypt to encrypt their files. But they were uh, directly encrypting on the network share. So, we, so it gave me a notice from, yo, there's ransomware uh, running on your network share. You need to take a look at it. And after a while, I was like, no, this is no ransomware. There's actually a, a user creating an encrypted file on the SMB share. Um, I also find, uh, found some um, high entropy um, uh, files, and those were actually created by certain printing programs or programs that create PDF files. Uh, they're crea they're keep on creating files in certain ways and sending a little bit, uh, every, time, every step a little bit of data. Uh, this data sent is mostly uh, hexadecimal or in bytes, so it has an already in high entropy value. And also, uh, we found some um, printing. Um, so if once someone was printing, like sending a printing job, it, was, uh, it generates a spool SS uh, uh, file, and that actually has a high entropy value. So every time someone was printing, we saw a notice coming up, it's ransomware, ransomware. Well, it wasn't ransomware, it was actually someone printing a file. Um, also, when, one of, when our IT department was 
um, changing the registers of uh, Windows uh, computers. It kept sending us, you know, ransomware, you have ransomware. But it was actually just a Win register sent, being sent over SMB. Uh, so I'll give you a demo. Uh, Okay, one second. Okay. It's not that spectacular. It's just generating all the logs. So I don't expect my laptop being encrypted and uh, need to evacuate everyone off the internet. Okay, so let's check for all these kinds of ransomware. Okay, so now it's generated all these kinds of logs. Um, we created the entropy log to um, of all the files that have been encrypted. Um, it, sh it displays all the entropy values, the file names that has been encrypted. As you can see, the .fun uh, extension is uh, a typical extension being used by Jigsaw ransomware that was created by a, by a German um, developer that had some weird issues because he created something with Jigsaw, uh, Hitman, and Hitler. So yeah, it was kind of weird of him spreading all these kinds of ransomware. Um, so if we check the notice log, uh, you see your message of uh, Fox Crypto Ransom. Well, Fox at he is really dedicated to their name, so we call it Fox Crypto Ransom. And it's actually, it says uh, a possible uh, ransomware encrypting a share detected. Yeah? Network share. Yeah. Yeah. In network share. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did anyone else uh, heard the question? I didn't hear the question. Okay, so the question was, uh, what are actually what I'm actually doing? Um, I'm well. What I'm, <laughs> where does, am I uh, checking for the ransomware? I'm actually check, um, so I'm actually checking the traffic between the client and the network share. So I'm capturing all the data being sent from one, from one uh, infected, infected client to the network share, capturing all, those, uh, all the data being sent and calculating the entropy value of it. Um, I'll show another sample. Uh, here we have another sample. It's generating a new log uh, and gives all the entropy values uh, with it. Uh, this was actually a pretty fun, uh, well, fun kind of ransomware to uh, to research on because a client, uh, because the one day I was working at the security operations center, I got a call from uh, someone in Netherlands saying that they were hit by ransomware. So I asked, uh, okay, what kind of ransomware were you targeted by? He told me crisis ransomware. I was like, Never heard of it. And he said, yeah, do you have any uh, tools to decrypt our files? So I was, yeah, sorry, we can't decrypt your files. You need to pay them to get your files back. Oh, we have a problem then because we don't have any backups. Uh, and actually, it was a pretty big company. I can't say the name of the company, but I was actually really shocked about it. Uh, so I was searching for some samples. And once I find a sample, uh, my boss got a text message of a friend of his who also got targeted by crisis ransomware and they couldn't do anything uh, with their computer. So I ran the sample and actually started encrypting all file extensions. 
even executables um, and everything else. So the computer was useless. You couldn't do even start up Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome. It's just you couldn't do anything. So you actually had to pay or just throw away your laptop and get a new one. But this was a typical uh, kind of ransomware that the author implemented the file extensions wrong. Yeah, uh, there's some rising uh, ransomware called Server. Uh, they released their second version, Server 2, like a few months ago. And uh, they actually re uh, released it, but the decryption tool uh, there were some bugs in it. So once they paid the ransomware, it couldn't decrypt the files. And uh, a security uh, researcher created an, uh, a blog uh, post of it. And like two minutes later, someone reacted to, it, uh, to the post like, yeah, the, decrypt the, the decryption tool is working now. Everyone, de everyone can decrypt your fi uh, their files again. Um, but also heard some people actually uh, negotiating with the uh, authors, like lowering the price of the ransomware. <laughs> and it actually, uh, they got a lower price of it. It's almost like they had to pay 50% of the price. So that was actually pretty fun to see. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, a coupon. <laughs> and um, the server ransomware has a uh, live support chat and is actually getting all, uh, like all the researchers saying like their support desk is better than every else, uh, co everyone else. <laughs> It's like you got a question on oh, no a problem, we'll fix it for you. Here you have your, your answer, and uh, oh, you need to you don't know what uh, encryption is, or you doesn't you don't know how we encrypted your files. Oh, here there's an explanation of how you got infected. So it's like it's getting the best of everyone else. <laughs> yes. The last column. Um, that's the mean value. Mean value is the amount of. Um, a bit uh, summed up to each other and divided by the length. So when a file has been encrypted, it has a, a large amount of bits. And so once it's been divided by the uh, file size, it actually generates a high amount of uh, value. Uh, I'll go back to... Uh, these are all the samples I've tested. Uh, Lucky is and uh, Cerber are the biggest uh, kind of biggest samples of ransomware currently being spread. Um, Jigsaw has been decrypted, but is still keeping uh, being spread because it's being sold for thirty dollars on the black market. Um, and some are already decrypted, but people still pay them even though they even though it's already decrypted. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Are there any questions? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to re uh, release it on GitHub. I actually just uh, spoke with a colleague of mine, and uh, we still need to do some little uh, bug fixes because we were uh, we had a conversation with Seth, and he said some uh, that some the SMB parser had some problems with certain events. So we're going to edit that, and we're going to bring it out as a bro package. No, uh, it does not do a file extraction. Um, SMB write command contains data. I'm actually grabbing the data, so we're leaving the file, only the data that being sent. Otherwise, we actually had to wait till the whole file has been encrypted and grab, every, uh, grab the whole file and then do an entropy check. This way, we're taking actually the first package and, and, and find if it's encrypted in the first stage. Uh, yeah, the whole script is configurable. Uh, I've currently have set it on um, only to generate a notice log if the entropy is high enough, um, and it's currently set on 30 high entropy values in two minutes. Yeah, to give to create a notice log. Uh, yeah, but also I've tested like thousands of samples 
and it's almost everyone is like in just a second and the whole share has been encrypted. Are there any more questions? Yeah? <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Uh, uh, not uh, no. It's like if we're actually seeing the entry, uh, seeing high entropy values, uh, the user is already late with um, stopping uh, the whole encryption process. So we're actually just calling the customer and say, "Yo, your uh, there's an infected client, and um, your share has been encrypted. Uh, we recommend you to um, to deep uh, to." Um, Set a, a, sorry, uh, to remove the computer from your network and uh, restore backups to your network share. Because ransomware is actually not spreading itself. It only installs on the uh, single computer and uh, encrypts everything else. So it's not possible to, that one in infected client hops to the network share and the network share hops to all the other clients connected to it. Any further questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the reason for this is actually, um, otherwise we, there's no way to detect ransomware, except for the communication with the command and control server. And that keeps on changing, so that's really hard to do. That's the only way to actually keep on with that is uh, uh, rule-based detection. Um, there's actually one uh, version of uh, ransomware that ma makes use of an encrypted, uh, password encrypted uh, compression. So a password protected compression uh, so it makes just one large zip file and stores all your files in it. But um, the, that's one is already being decrypted because they could take the password out of the memory and just open the zip file and everything was fine. The only way there is one encryption uh, standard that can generate um, a low amount of a low value of entropy. So you can. Um, yeah, you can get past the detection, but the whole script is uh, is editable, so you can in instantly uh, change the entropy value. But uh, when a file has been encrypted, it has a 7.5 entropy or higher. Okay, thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I've actually made a, uh, a list to um, ignore certain file types. So, like, if you're using, uh, if you want to use the policy in your company, but it's generating a lot of, um, uh, like, like I was saying, encryption, um, Ferrocrypt uh, extensions, you just can say, okay, ignore this extension, and it just ignores everything else, everything, the whole extension. Okay, thank you for having me.